Look at this fiery crash right here on your screen. An investigation is underway right now into this deadly freeway crash right along the 805. It's about the along the southbound lanes near University Avenue, about 2:15 this morning. So just a, under four hours ago, CHP still looking into what led up to that crash. We do know one person has died, and the impact of it spread debris throughout the freeway. So they had to shut down several lanes. All the lanes are now clear and back open. Another top story that we're following here this morning, the tributes are growing for a teenager who was shot and killed in City Heights. The community is opening up about this young man as police try to find out who's responsible for his death. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol has been staying on top of the story. She's live outside San Diego Police Headquarters now with what we know here. Henry. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Well, we're learning that this teenager would have been a freshman at Hoover High School next year. His name was Enrique Medina, and we spoke to many of his friends and family members, especially those who played with him on the soccer field. We're getting a better idea who he was on and off that field. My best memory with him was when we won the championship at a tournament, and then he came, he came to hug me because, like, we won. And it was like a hard tournament, and he just came and ran at me and hugged me. Now, that was his teammate, Tristan Castro, who uh, showed up at the scene after Sunday shooting at Polk Avenue and 37th Street in City Heights. Now, today you find a memorial with flowers, balloons, candles on the sidewalk, where Enrique was found with a gunshot wound. Now the two boys played soccer together when they were attending Clark Middle School in City Heights. Now a little bit of background on what happened. Police say the teenager was shot by a group of Hispanic men who quickly drove away in a light colored sedan. Now in recent months, Enrique had been working out as well at a boxing gym on University Avenue. His coach, David Ventura, said he was a really likable kid and a talented boxer, but had noticed he stopped coming to the gym in late May or early June. Everyone respected him at the gym uh, and they respected his skills and how tough he was too. You know, he, he he's definitely going to be missed. And police haven't identified the suspects in this murder yet. So, of course, they're asking you if you have any information, please contact Crime Stoppers. There is a GoFundMe set up on uh, on CBSite.com. They have the link there for you just to help with ex funeral expenses. So if you'd like to access that, again, click the help button on CBSite.com. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from San Diego Police Headquarters. Marie, thank you. Right now, authorities across Southern California are investigating a string of shootings at 7-Eleven stores, all happening, oddly, on the date 7-Eleven. At least two people were killed and several others were hurt in six robberies. It all started when 7-Elevens in Upland and Ontario were robbed around 1 a.m. No one was hurt in those holdups. Several people were shot in four other robberies, though, at 7-Elevens in Riverside, Santa Ana, Brea, and La Habra. A clerk in Brea was killed, as well as a man in Santa Ana. Right now, investigators believe the La Habra, Brea, and Santa Ana shootings are all connected. And this morning, we have now learned the new details on the sailor found dead aboard the USS Carl Vinson. That's the one docked here in the San Diego Bay. The Navy identified him as 22-year-old Darren Collins. You see his picture right there. He served as an information systems technician second class. Collins is a native of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He enlisted in the Navy in 2019. Circumstances of his death still under investigation. As of now, there are no signs of suicide or foul play. And right now, fire crews are making some progress, trying to contain this mass massive wildfire that's threatening the giant sequoias in Yosemite National Park. You see these images. I mean, it's really heartbreaking to see that this time it's called the Washburn Fire. It's now 22% contained. So at least that's some improvement compared to yesterday. Officials do say on a positive note, the fire is moving as forecast, although they're still working fast to save some of these oldest trees in the world. About 500 sequoias are there. A Yosemite spokesperson explains how tirelessly those fire crews are working. Everyone has to just be kind of on their toes and constantly planning for what could possibly happen. And you're thinking 24 hours ahead, 48 hours ahead, 72 hours ahead. 
It is extremely dry and hot as we know and crews are working from the air as you saw making those air drops. They're also tracking and mapping out any hot spots to send the ground crews to officials say the fire is burning so hot that it's creating its own weather system. We see that happen often with these massive fires. The National Park Service says more than 85% of giant sequoia habitat has burned since 2015. Uh, tough to see that. Well, right now we have learned two witnesses will testify at today's House Committee hearing investigating the Capitol insurrection. Former Oath Keepers spokesman Jason Van Tatenov will address the panel of the events on January 6th. And Stephen Ayers, who is accused of saying, quote, a civil war would ensue, end quote, if Trump were denied the presidency, he's also set to testify. Ayers pleaded guilty last month to disorderly and disruptive conduct for entering the Capitol the day of the riot. The committee is also expected to focus on a tweet from former President Trump ahead of the Capitol, the uh, Capitol riot, that said, quote, be there, it will be wild. Well, the president's tweet on the in the wee hours of December 19th activated the groups and how the members of Congress amplified that tweet. A committee member tells CBS News excerpts of the interview with former White House counsel Pat Cipollone will also be played. You can watch today's hearing right here on CBS 8 starting at 10 a.m. A local group is fighting back over the White House's plan to complete part of the border wall. This plan would include two 30-foot high barriers directly through Friendship Park, which families have used for many years to meet up with loved ones on other sides of the border. So this group, Friends of Friendship Park, they're encouraging supporters to contact elected officials and to show up outside of Friendship Park. The park was designed as a bi-national park for friends and community members, and so we encourage people to, to be present at the park as a way of demonstrating their support. Now, now, in a statement here to CBS 8, U.S. Border Patrol officials have said the current walls and pedestrian gate need to be replaced because they're structurally unsound, and they say that they pose a safety risk. Today marks the official opening of a new exhibit showcasing some of the world's smallest penguins. We are talking about the little blue penguins and they are swimming around right now at the birch aquarium yeah and they dive a lot they swim a lot cbs 8's chris grow live in la jolla they waddle a lot and as we've seen you make that attempt <laughs> you're one of the lucky ones you get to be there early this morning <laughs> yeah yeah no this is a really special experience right now being able to get in here before the public gets to see them tomorrow and i want to show you right now they're not taking a bath anymore. They just got out of the water, but that little guy right there with the yellow tag, uh, he was actually in the water, and we were just talking with Kayla, Kayla Strait, uh, here with the Birch Aquarium about exactly what was going on, and he was taking a bath just like any one of us. So, Kayla, could you kind of explain a little bit about what we saw? I mean, these penguins, just like us, when they get dirty, they want to get clean. <laughs> you got it. Penguins are birds, so their bodies are covered in feathers. It's kind of hard to tell with the penguin because they nest together. They're so uh, packedly tight in there like shingles on a roof, but their feathers are so important for their waterproofing and their thermoregulation because penguins spend their lives out at sea. So swimming and diving is an important part of their life, but preening and bathing is uh, just as equally important. And something else that we've been learning because all these wonderful little facts about these little blue penguins is the fact that they can actually climb. So we know they can't fly. They're not they're not birds of flight necessarily. We know they swim, but they can also climb, huh? They do. They When they come up on shore and they would retreat, um, their kind of daily routine is would go out to sea during the day, come ashore at night, and then retreat to their burrows. And some of these areas in Australia and New Zealand are really steep cliffs or sort of rocky dwellings that they use their little nails to climb. And sometimes they'll reach and use their bill or their beak to help pull themselves up. I, I mean, that's just incredible. You can learn a lot about these little guys. And I want to bring you guys back out here live because you'll see these two here in the enclosure. Uh, we've obviously got the water here, but what you may not be able to see just yet is that there is a waterfall and we're all sitting here waiting for them to slide down that waterfall. Now, Kayla, you've seen that before. Is it sort of like watching a toddler go down like a water slide for the first time? Or? Absolutely. They're not the most graceful animals on land. And when they're diving, they look so sleek and, uh, you know, streamlined. But then when you see them climbing and maybe they slip and fall and trip down maybe the waterfall or some of the rocks, um, they're just a lot of fun to watch all around.
Oh, well, Kayla, thank you so much. And we are going to stake out this little waterfall, this little spot right here, just so that we can get that moment. Um, I, I've got something up on my Instagram right now. I've got a video where one of them just kind of hops down a step. And again, as you pointed out, not the most graceful of creatures, but neither am I. Neither are really much of any of us, even though we live on land the whole time. So don't take it out on these little blue guys. They're they're doing their best. All right, Eric and Meta. Uh, we can sympathize with that. Literally, that's what makes them Especially fun to watch. this yeah. early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like all of us, stumbling around, yeah. taking our baths, trying to figure out where are we. <laughs> they're like us pre-coffee in the morning, yes, exactly. just stumbling around. Uh, good morning. It is Tuesday. We are waking up to pretty dense clouds along the coastline, getting to check your forecast as we start off the day. 6-11 on the clock. We are about 20 minutes out from that sunrise, so we've got some light peering through, but notice that we're not really allowing for much of the view of the sun and that's because that marine layer is pretty well intact to kick off the day. That's going to be the case for tomorrow as well. Low 70s along the coast this afternoon as those clouds break apart. Mid and lower 80s inland and western valleys are picking up on that layer of clouds right now, but uh, farther off toward the east we're doing okay. 85 across the mountains this afternoon and 111 for the deserts. They are already warming up because they don't have much in terms of cloud cover. Here's a view outside from San Miguel. I mean, how about this to kick off your morning sunrise? was at 550 and we're getting now allowing for this kind of fiery view out there. It is the perfect setup. You've got the marine layer that is pretty deep uh, into the bottom half of the screen here, and then you've got those mid and high level clouds that we're working through, and that's allowing for uh, this beautiful uh, orange, yellow, red tone to uh, peek through from our mountaintops. Afternoon highs are going to look like this. So along the coastline, we're going to stay mostly in the upper 60s and low 70s. A high of 68 degrees in Pacific Beach this afternoon, 66 in La Jolla, 73 in San Diego, and 71 in Chula Vista. El Cajon's warming up to 82. Let's move up to the North County coastline where you see temperatures mostly in the upper 60s and low 70s. 75 for Vista, 79 for Rancho Bernardo, and 81 for Escondido. Let's get a check of what's going on as far as traffic goes. It's 612 right now on the clock, and right now we do see that things are pretty mellow on the roads, but I will take you to a closure that we want to mention, and that's already looking to cause some delays, but this closure is going to take place from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. tonight through Thursday. So again, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. The 8 is going to be closed between the 5 and the 163. So the 8 eastbound and westbound is going to be closed. There will be one lane of the westbound uh, 8 that will be open. This is going to be in the Mission Valley area again from the 5 to the 163. That's where you're going to run into those delays. Construction will be taking place. So expect some if you're traveling between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. We'll keep you up to date, of course, with each morning, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday morning as to what traffic looks like on the roads. But for now, looks like we do have some slightly slower speed there on the 8 itself. Back to you guys.